Hello, my friend. I want to ask you a question. Can a marriage ever be perfect? You know, this is a question that is often debated and the answer is often clouded by romance novels, by romantic comedy, by fairy tale, by social media, by the internet, by reality TV show. And I think that we can all strive to be better at doing marriage. I really do believe that. But will it ever be perfect? That is the question. And that is exactly what we want to unpack in this episode. So let's have this conversation. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the show. I am Doreen, and this is Not Easily Broken. Now, marriage is a journey. It is not a destination. Marriage is a marathon. It is not a sprint. A successful marriage is not built in a day. It is built daily. It is a union between two individuals who come together, each with their own set of experiences, expectations, and also flaws. Yes, we come to marriage with a lot of stuff. And let's be real. No one is perfect. Let's get that right out the box, right? We all have our quirks. We have our bad habits. We have our differences. So it is absolutely unrealistic to expect a marriage to be perfect from the get-go. In fact, the idea of perfection or the idea of a perfect marriage can be downright damaging. It set an unattainable standard and when reality sets in, it can lead to disappointment and disillusionment. Marriage, my friend, is about navigating the ups and downs of life together, learning to appreciate each other's differences and growing as individuals and also growing as a couple. The truth is a strong marriage requires effort, it requires commitment, it requires patience, it requires sacrifice, it requires dedication, it requires fidelity, and it requires work. It takes work to build a a foundation of trust, respect, and communication in a marriage. And even then, there will be times when you disagree with each other. It is a part of marriage. And when you feel like giving up and throwing the towel, that happens too. But it is in those moments that you must choose to work together. It is in those moments that you need each other the most. It is in these moments that you're supposed to listen to each other, learn about each other. Marriage requires a lot of effort. It requires working, serving, giving. It requires a lot of patience and a lot of tolerance. You have to accept the reality that your spouse is not perfect. They never will be perfect. You marry a flawed human being. And I know that we are sold a lie, but they come to the marriage with issues and drama and trauma and problems that you probably didn't even see coming. There is going to be disappointments. There is going to be pain. There is going to be frustration. And there's going to be some anger too. But how do you navigate through it? How do you work through it? That will determine the kind of marriage that you will have. There will be season when you don't really like each other. I know it's not the most popular thing to say, but be real about it. You may love somebody, but you don't always like them. You don't like the way they act. You don't like the way they behave. You don't like the way they treat you. You didn't like what they said. You don't like them. That doesn't mean you don't love them. It is inevitable that you're not going to always like each other. I know this very well. Come on, let's be real about it. You see, the problem is that we were sold a lie about perfection. We were bamboozled and sold a lie about happily ever after. There's no happy ever after in a real marriage. There's going to be a whole lot of happy, but there is going to be moments when there is sadness. But happily ever after is something that was created and something that was sold to us through movies. But in a real life, in a real marriage, you're going to go to work. You're going to fight for it because the enemy wants to destroy it. The real question is, are you ready to fight for your marriage? Are you ready to put away the falls and unrealistic expectations? Are you ready to be challenged with the ups and downs of life? The in and the out, the up, the down, the over, the under. Are you ready to give it everything that you've got? Are you willing to lean in and build a better marriage? Love is recognizing that the person 
person that you marry has flaws. Yes, we do. We are flawed human beings. We have a sin nature. I know we like to paint a perfect picture, but no one is perfect. Two people in a marriage both have strength and they also have weaknesses. They deal with good habits and they deal with bad habits. They have good days and they have bad days. There are times when you doubt each other too. Like, is this really going to work? I mean, let's be real for real. Sometimes you lack the faith. Sometimes you don't feel like you are strong enough to weather the storm of this relationship. But you have got to trust God and you have got to do the work. You have got to know that to have a better marriage, it's on the other side of discipline. It's on the other side of work. It's on the other side of commitment. It's on the other side of faithfulness. It's on the other side of fidelity. It's on the other side of forgiveness. Come on now. My friend, love is embracing your spouse imperfection. Love is seen beyond the arguments and the mistakes, the bad habits, and the things that you don't like. Love is about realizing that perfection does not exist in a relationship, but there is so much beauty in the decision to make an effort to connect every single day. Uniting together as one, believing in God, that if God did the joining, he's qualified to do the keeping. That's something that my wife and I coined. Love is about learning how to forgive. We often say that there is no forgiveness without love and there is no love without forgiveness. For God so loved that he gave. Love is about learning how to communicate effectively. Healthy communication is a critical part of a successful marriage. Communication is a solvent of all marital problems. Love is about growing independently and also growing together. Growth is the separator. When you grow, everything around you grows, including your marriage. When you change and get better, everything around you change and get better too. Because we are able to add value. We are able to influence influence change in our spouse and in our marriage. We become impact player in our environment and that includes how we love and serve in the marriage. They said that when the tide rises, all ship rise. When you elevate yourself, when you build yourself up, when you move from a place of negativity and you start to think positively, you start to grow, you start to change, you start to get better and you become a magnet that pulled your spouse towards you. You have the ability to take your marriage and your relationship to the next level. Your marriage will rise and fall because of you. You can be a bridge in your marriage or you can be a burden. You can be an asset or you can be a liability. The choice is yours. You have to make a choice. You can make a choice to be bitter or you can make a choice to be better. You can be a complainer, a whiner, or you can be a person that step out and do the work to build the kind of marriage that you want. Love is a choice. My friend, love is a choice. The choice to stay and fight for what is right. The choice to create a better environment for your children and for your family and for the community that you live in. A choice to wake up every morning and decide that I choose God, I choose faith, I choose love, and I'm going to choose you every single day. A choice to choose yourself. A choice to become a better version of you that will impact and influence change in the marriage and to the one that you profess to love. Love is a decision that must be made daily. It's not built in a day. It's not done in a day. It's a constant perpetual state of loving and serving and giving and doing the things necessary through God's help and through God's word and through sacrifice to make it work. I don't love just because I feel like it. I choose to love daily. I don't depend on my feelings to act. I act because that's what love does. Love is an action word. I choose to serve. I choose to give. I made a decision. I chose. I decide that I'm going to be the best that I can be, even when it's not easy. I choose to be selfless, even when my attitude is telling me not to, even when my pride is telling me not to. I choose to stay faithful when there were opportunities that I didn't have to stay faithful. It's a choice. Self-perfection is being mature. It's the maturity. Love chooses to do good even when evil lurking behind the scene, lurking trying to tell you what to do and how to do it. Love is believing God 
trusting in him and not in your own understanding. Love decide to do right when there is opportunity to do wrong. It all comes down to what you decide to do. It's not about perfection, my friend. It's about making decisions daily that yield the result that you're looking for. That's what it all comes down to. What do you decide? What is the thing that you want the most out of your marriage? What do you want your spouse to experience with you? That's what it comes down to. And as I sit here talking to you, I want to encourage you. I want to pour into you. I want to add value to you. I want you to know that God is able to do mighty things in your life. But you got to trust him. You got to trust. You got to believe. You have got to lean in. You have got to serve. You have to give. And you have to get away from this mindset that everything has to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Not on this side of heaven. Not when we are in a flawed system. Not when we are dealing with broken people, but through the grace of God and through surrendering your life and allowing God to use you to be an example in your spouse's life, you can become a change agent. You can become an impact player. You can become who God have called you to be and help to build the kind of marriage that you love and you appreciate and you admire, a love and a marriage that you're proud of. And that's what it's all about, my friend. And my friend, that's the end of this episode. That's the end of this show today. I pray that it add value to you. And if you get something from it, then please do us a favor and like this video, share, subscribe to our YouTube and to our podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of this journey. May God bless you. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one.